gene regulation in eukaryotes is a little bit more complex than bacteria, but many of the principles that you've learned in the last lecture apply. So today we're going to talk about how genes are regulated in eukaryotes, and I hope that you can recognize the important parallels and differences. So please prepare some questions for question time, and here comes the voiceover. Here we have a histone octamer with DNA wrapped around it, forming a nucleosome. The nucleosome structure is critical for turning on and turning off gene expression in eukaryotes. And we're going to discuss this today as we discuss how gene regulation occurs in eukaryotes. There are many important differences between gene regulation in eukaryotes and prokaryotes, which is what we discussed in the previous lecture. Prokaryotic genes are organized into operons, which are transcribed as a single RNA that can encode multiple proteins. Eukaryotic genes are usually transcribed separately, with each gene having its own promoter. Chromatin structure, which of course includes the nucleosome, regulates gene expression in eukaryotes. In addition, the nuclear membrane separates transcription and translation in time and space, allowing for a greater diversity of regulatory mechanisms than in prokaryotes. Here is the crystal structure of the nucleosome core particle. Histones 2A, 2B, H3, and H4 are colored. DNA is in gray. Altering chromatin structure can occur by chromatin remodeling, and this involves modification of the histone proteins. The methylation state of the DNA is also important in gene regulation in eukaryotes. We've learned a lot about chromatin remodeling in part because when chromatin is more open, it is sensitive to DNase 1. These DNase 1 hypersensitivity sites are usually 1,000 base pairs upstream of the transcription start site. To unwind DNA, the chromatin remodeling complex binds and repositions the nucleosomes. This exposes the transcription factor binding site. Transcription factors and RNA polymerase bind to DNA and initiate transcription. One of the most well-studied ways that histones are, are modified is acetylation. The positively charged tails of nucleosomal histone proteins interact with the negatively charged phosphate groups of DNA. If histones are acetylated, acetylation of the tails weakens their interactions with DNA and permits some transcription factors to bind to the DNA. So this opens up the nucleosome for transcription. Histones can be modified in a number of ways. Histone protein modifications include methylation, phosphorylation, acetylation, ubiquitylation, and sumolation. These modifications act in diverse biological processes, such as transcriptional activation or inactivation, such as in the case of acetylation, chromosome packaging, and DNA damage and repair. The histone code is the, the modification of histone proteins that encodes information about how genes are expressed. An important technique in understanding how chromatin state affects transcription is chromatin immunoprecipitation. During chromatin immunoprecipitation, or CHIP, DNA binding proteins and DNA are cross-linked, so the DNA and these proteins are stably attached to each other. Cells are lysed, the chromatin is fragmented, then antibodies are added to the fragmented chromatin. These antibodies are specific to certain modifications of chromatin or other DNA binding proteins and the antibody is used to precipitate the DNA. DNA and the protein are separated by digesting all the protein, and then the DNA fragments are sequenced. 
And this can be done with Illumina sequencing, for example. So you can know what type of DNA binding protein or what type of modified histone, let's say, is associated with what sequences of DNA in the genome. DNA methylation is another important method of transcription control in vertebrates and plants. Methylated DNA is associated with the repression of transcription in vertebrates and plants. Therefore, unmethylated DNA is more likely to be transcribed in these organisms. DNA methylases add methyl groups to cytosine groups next to guanines. These regions are CPG islands and are found near transcriptional start sites. Eukaryotic promoters are more complex than their prokaryotic cousins. These promoters have binding sites for multiple DNA binding proteins. Here I'm showing different consensus sequences that are associated with promoters. And these pro sequences, these regions, can be mixed and matched. And each of these promoter sequences, such as GC, are associated with the binding of certain activator proteins that lead to transcription. Here's an animation that shows examples of regulatory switches that are important in eukaryotic gene regulation. So this is a gene with the yellow part uh, of the DNA, uh, the coding part colored yellow. That might encode something like a lens protein. It would normally only be expressed if an RNA polymerase lands on the gene's promoter and makes a messenger RNA from the gene. The coding region of the gene is surrounded by a series of regulatory switches. So these are parts of DNA that don't code for any protein. Instead, they act as switches that determine where and when the gene turns on. Those switches are the landing sites for regulatory molecules that bind to the switches, recruit RNA polymerase to the gene's promoter, and cause an increase in the total number of messenger RNA transcripts that's coming from the gene. So typically, a gene will be surrounded by multiple uh, switches. That allows the gene to be turned on at different times and places uh, under the control of different signals and regulatory molecules. A lens protein in the mouse is also expressed in the liver, for example. It might have a switch where a regulatory molecule turns it on in the eye lens. The PAX6 gene is an example of a regulatory molecule that would bind to one of those switches. There'd be a different switch uh, for turning the gene on uh, in the liver. Transcriptional activation in eukaryotes begins when transcription factors, RNA polymerase, and transcriptional activator proteins bind DNA and stimulate transcription. And these proteins can bind at a number of sites, including enhancers and the core promoter. And the binding of all of these factors is essential for RNA polymerase to begin transcription. The GAL4 UAS system is an ex interesting example from yeast of how transcription is activated in the response to galactose. So in the absence of galactose, GAL80 blocks GAL4, a transcription factor, from activating transcription and GAL4 here binds to UAS sequences. When galactose is present, GAL3 is activated, and GAL3 brings about a change in the conformation of GAL80. This allows GAL4 to now interact with the basal transcription apparatus and stimulate the transcription of genes that are needed for galactose metabolism. Eukaryotic chromosomes contain many genes and have a much more complicated organization than prokaryotes. So for example, you can have two genes that are near each other that are in the opposite orientation and can be independently transcribed. And how can you do this? So in this example, Enhancer 1 can stimulate the transcription of gene A 
but its effect on gene B is blocked by the insulator by the same token Enhancer 2 can stimulate the transcription of gene B, but, the, but its effect on gene A is blocked by the insulator. So this makes insulators a very important part of eukaryotic gene regulation. In eukaryotes, RNA can play an important role in gene regulation. And one example of this is RNAi. And this is something that is also used as a technique in molecular biology, and it's a very powerful technique to knock down gene function. During RNAi, double-stranded RNA is cleaved by the enzyme dicer. This produces small interfering RNAs, or siRNAs. The siRNAs combine with the protein complex the siRNAs combine with the protein complex RISC and pair with complementary sequences on the mRNA. This causes a cleavage. The mRNA is then cleaved and is degraded by the cell. And this will reduce the function of a gene because this cleaved RNA will never be translated. MicroRNAs are a related way of regulating gene function. So you have a double-stranded region of RNA that has a hairpin in it, and that's that circular part. Other double-stranded regions of RNA molecules are cleaved by dicer, and this produces microRNAs. When they combine with the risk com complex, the risk complex is still brought to the mRNA, but it pairs imperfectly with the mRNA. And this leads to the inhibition of translation, not the degradation. siRNAs can also play a role in the methylation state of DNA. Other siRNAs attach to complementary sequences in DNA and attract methylating enzymes. These methylating enzymes can methylate the DNA or they can methylate histones that are nearby and both of these will inhibit transcription. So today I've given you a brief survey of gene regulation in eukaryotes and there are some genetic terms and concepts I'd like you to remember histone code, modification of histone proteins, such as the addition or removal of phosphate groups, methyl groups, or acetyl groups, that encode information affecting how genes are expressed. Chromatin remodeling complex, a complex of proteins that alters chromatin structure without acetylating histone proteins. CPG island, DNA region that contains many copies of a cytosine base followed by a guanine base, often found near transcription start sites in eukaryotic DNA. The cytosine bases in CPG islands are commonly methylated when genes are inactive, but are demethylated before the initiation of transcription. Mediator, complex of proteins that is one of the components of the basal transcription apparatus. Insulator, DNA sequence that blocks or insulates the effect of an enhancer, must be located between the enhancer and the promoter to have blocking activity, also may limit the spread of changes in chromatin structure. Response element, common DNA sequence found upstream of some groups of eukaryotic genes. A regulatory protein binds to a response element and stimulates a transcription of a gene. The presence of the same response element in several promoters or enhancers allows a single factor to simultaneously stimulate the transcription of several genes. I just wanted to thank you all for a great semester. I really enjoyed teaching this class. And here is Robert Smithson's Spiral Jetty, a great work of earth art that is in the Great Salt Lake in Utah.
I hope you do well in the final, and I hope you have a great summer.